I got home one afternoon and Tammy was gone. But I couldn't wait to get out of the office. I got home, got out of my office clothes, put some shorts on and some Crocs. And we had just gotten some chickens and I thought, I'll go see how our chickens are doing. So I go trotting out to the chicken coop and there comes a four foot rattlesnake. And I'm in my shorts and Crocs and I'm like, Oh my gosh, what do I do? And so I turned around, I started running towards the house. And I called my oldest son. I said, where's your shotgun? He goes, oh, it's right inside in the front closet. He said, where's the shells? And he goes, it's loaded. I'm like, okay. And I hung up, grabbed the shotgun, go running back out to the chicken coop. And I couldn't find the snake. So now I'm tiptoeing around outside looking for this four foot rattlesnake still in my crocs and shorts and i'm like oh my gosh this thing has to be here somewhere after about 15 minutes i finally found it and had to come around and then i was looking right at the barn i'm like oh my gosh i'm gonna blast the hole in my barn so i came around got the right angle and no more snake so now my adrenaline's like really pumping and i go up and i sit down on the front porch and I'm catching my breath and in drives my wife. And I'm sitting on the front porch, shotgun across my lap. And she rolls her window down and she goes, you look like one of those two old guys from secondhand lions. And I just kind of had to laugh and say, you know what? I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm good with that. We are first generation ranchers and we didn't inherit anything. We had to buy property and we, we bought everything that we could, which is only 80 acres. In that 80 acres, we are intending to make the ground better as, as we raise our bison. I was raised on a grain farm in Indiana, and I had no experience with animals, I mean big animals. And so this is all new to both of us, actually. Frequently the question we get is, why in the world are you doing bison? And there's a story. It was nine years ago, I was helping a friend move to Cheyenne, Wyoming. Both my sons and I were up there helping him unloading trucks. And Tammy was driving up to pick us up one Sunday afternoon. She was driving up to Cheyenne. She passed by the Terry Bison Ranch. And it was one of those epically clear days and also a rare day when you could see hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of bison from the highway. And the sight of all those bison stirred her heart so much, her immediate response was, really God? Buffalo, really?
She got to Cheyenne and found me in the back of this truck unloading all this stuff for my friend. And she comes jumping up into the back of this truck and said, I want buffalo. And I thought, oh my gosh, my wife's lost her mind. But she knew, and in her heart, she held on to that. I had this dream. And in my dream, it was just this thought process. Memphis, only 68 miles from Denver, no big deal, we can do this. And there is no Memphis, Colorado. There is no Memphis, Wyoming, or Nebraska, or Kansas. And we looked it up. And Memphis was an ancient city in Egypt. And this Memphis was known as a haven of goodness. And so we started looking for land within a 68 mile radius of where Greg worked in Denver, where I worked in Longmont. And our ranch that we purchased is exactly 68 miles from his old employer and from my old employer. And it's like, okay. It was that fall she found there was a Rocky Mountain Buffalo Association and they were having a conference up in Walden. So we agreed, we went, and as we're driving over to Walden that afternoon, we went straight across from Fort Collins through the mountains and it was just this beautiful fall day. And I just had to absorb that moment. And it's like, I think God's trying to tell me something here. I think he's telling me he's, he's with us, he's listening. Well, that turned out to be a pretty epic weekend. And we met some of the most amazing people that we've ever come across in our life. And now we are lifelong friends with a lot of those people. And, and I was kind of intrigued now. Tammy was really, she was the one that really embraced it. But, but the lifestyle intrigued me. The next summer, I became sick. It was in June. And I didn't get better. And I kept getting worse and worse. And went to the doctor, went to the ER, and went to the doctor. And they weren't sure what was wrong with me. I could barely get to work. I missed a lot of work. I got to the point where I couldn't hardly drive. And there was one night late in September that I was startled awake by a, an audible voice that said, you are Big Heart Bison. And I said, um, okay, God. I said, I'm not sure I'm gonna live through the night, but okay, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this crazy bison thing. And I just got on with life and started pursuing this dream of having buffalo. Well, we did it, and here we are, we're doing it. So we bought our first animals. It was a pen of five yearling heifers. We got it at the Gold Trophy sale um, January of 2016. So of those five animals, we still have four out there in the pasture. And we bought seven year, yearling heifers two years ago, um, and then six more last year. So of those seven, um, they had calves this year. And then we expect to have an additional six more having calves next next year. A lot of our bison do have names, not all of them, but we started this naming convention. So the first four we have, they all have names start with A. So we have Abby, Annabelle, Avery, and Alex. And then um, as we have calves, they, um, when you only have two calves, you name them. When you have nine calves like you do right now and you can't tell them apart, you don't name them. But our firstborn calf, his name is Kayim, which means life. And then um, we had a, a little heifer calf. Her name is Kaylee, which means from heaven. So once we started this venture, we figured out there's gotta be a way to make money at this. And you can't wait for seven years for your first 
yearling heifer to have a calf for that calf to finally be, if it's a bull, a meat animal. And it's like a seven year process. It's like, okay, we can't do that. And so we decided to start farmer's markets. started small the first year we did one market and um, I think we sold what a total of like five thousand dollars that first year and I've had markets I went to you sold fifty dollars and it's like boy this is painful but we've gotten better at it we've gotten better at selling we've gotten better at our processes so I have um, a market trailer over there there are two freezers um, on wheels we had a generator on it and um, we've gone through the second generator and when the second generator was having problems, Greg decided to put in a battery bank. We started having problems with generators and they were always, you know, there's a little bit of noise associated with that and and, and some fumes, but, but generally they work pretty well, but then I started having problems with them and they kept shutting off and the heat and so I read about how they have battery banks on boats and RVs and decided to try doing something with that. So I started building this. It's not complete yet, but I have four, four deep cycle marine batteries and I'm able to power two freezers and instant pots for hours at a time. And there's no noise. It's no fumes, it's working out very well. I still have a little work to do on it, but so far so good. Um, we do five farmer's markets a week. Um, so I believe this year is like 90 farmer's markets that we we go to. We have 19 left this year yet. I bring a variety of all the cuts. So I have all the main steaks, I have all the main roasts, I have ground. We have a ground round, which is a much leaner. And um, I even take the organ meats. I, there is a market for organ meats. So we just take a wide variety of all the cuts. I also have um, jerky, snack stick, summer sausage. I have those coolers in the back of my truck, so I will also refill those. A lot of farmer's market's about educating. It's not just about selling the meat, it's about telling them about the animal, about how good it is. Just having that face-to-face -face interaction with your customer, is it's a really good it's a really good thing i like meeting who's gonna eat your meat we actually do samples at the farmer's market because a lot of people have never tasted bison before we have um, a pamphlet that's like why bison is better and so it gives some of the nutritional value um, comparing it to chicken beef pork no pork salmon so it compares it to beef chicken and salmon and just shows you how it is a better meat.
restore the animal, restore the land, restore the people. It is all related. One of the things I discovered was a bunch of videos on the internet, and it had to do with Alan Savory and the holistic management. And I started watching some of those. I watched his initial TED talk, and I was just absolutely intrigued by that. And it was sometime shortly after that, there was an ad came out in the National Bison Association about a holistic land management seminar up at the Durham Ranch. And my wife called me up and said, did you see this ad? And I said, yeah, I didn't read it, but I saw it. She goes, you got to go to this. We're, we got to do this. And so we registered and I went up to that and it was at, um, at the Durham Ranch and Roland Cruz led this class. And, and there was a lot of things I didn't understand there, but some things you just know that's the right thing to do. And if you can raise animals, and at the same time, you make your land better, that's just the right thing to do. And so I, I absorbed as much as I could, and there was, again, a lot that I didn't understand. I remember they were having this discussion about fencing and H braces, and I'm sitting in the back of the class and had to Google what an H brace was, because I had no clue. I didn't even know what a T post was. I had to sit there and Google that. But I came away from that knowing that that was the right thing to do. This holistic management is to be in every part of what we do with this business. So we are still early in that process of, of holistic management. We're starting to make practices. We've taken this 80 acres, we've divided it up into 11 different paddocks so we can manage their grazing. Now right now, as you look at this, it's in the fall, it's very dry, but we've still managed it as best that we can. This spring, it was a very green. Now we did have a lot of, of rain, more than normal rain, but we're starting to see the benefits of that. And so when we get a few more years into this, I expect our land to be noticeably better than that, better than what it was when we moved in here. So it is early in the process for us. We have talked to Roland Cruz. He will be coming out this fall and helping us carry this further. But that's our goal, that's our dream, is not only to have healthy animals, but healthy land. And if you've got those two, the people around that and the people that, support, that are supporting that are gonna be healthier too. <laughs> It was two years ago, we were coming home from a farmer's market in Greeley. And we had a call from some friends at church and says, hey, there's about a dozen buffalo down here running down across the road, are they yours? And we panicked and we were on our way home. We turned around and sure enough, they were ours. And I just like, I don't know what to do. And I called a good friend of mine, Dave Sharath, I said, Dave, my herd's out. My herd is like eight miles from home. I don't know what to do. And Dave kind of chuckled. He goes, don't panic. He said, let me make some phone calls. And so he, he called the guys up at the Cherry Bison Ranch and they dropped everything, brought ATVs down and helped us get our animals in. No property damage, no injuries, no loss of life. <laughs> and it's just one of those things that happened, but those guys dropped everything and came and helped us. And those relationships are absolutely critical. There's times where other people are gonna call us, and they have, and said, hey, we need a help, and I'll take work off and go and spend a day at another guy's place and help them. 
those relationships are absolutely vital to what we do. So the other ranchers, the other processors, we just cannot do it without these these relationships. Now I even have friends that work for Ted Turner and I can call them up and they'll give me all the answers that they can and help me out in any way possible. Being involved in the associations is absolutely vital. How you do that without these other friends and relationships, I just don't think is possible. Um, one of our core values is that whoever lives on our land is going to have the best life possible while we have the means to give it to them. Um, I know I'm putting human emotions to an animal, but when I look at how these animals are designed, and you can see it when there is a storm coming, they go nose into the wind and they weather it. And not only do they weather it, they actually thrive in, in some of those most adverse cold temperatures. And then you look into their eyes and there is a connection there. You know there's a bond. They know we care about them. They know we take care of them. They know we'll do whatever it takes. Some bags and we headed west Thought that it might be the best thing for us but I was thinking about me And all the things that you'd leave behind Family and a peace of mind And I, I, I got you I am gonna love you till the stars go out Shelter up above you till they all fall down We ain't got light, we got love We ain't got light, we got love Floating like feathers in the heavy rain Two of us together can weather any change that comes our way. Nothing here really feels like home. Home is who you're with when you don't feel alone anymore. I am gonna love you till the stars go out. Shelter up above you till they all fall. Yeah.